Okay, we're live. All right, I guess we are. Hi, um, everybody. Hello. Do we have a campaign name for this? I don't think. Uh, I mean, it's we not don't. Even a campaign, we'll have to come up really with one. one. How about the fuck all? <laughs> fuck all, yeah. Shit show, fuck all, one shot. Definitely can't put that on YouTube. Damn. Poop show, screw all, one shot. Clean. Um, you can't right. put you can't put shit show on YouTube since when? I mean, I'd rather not have that as the title of the video. It's oh. it's it's funny you say shit show, Benny, because literally the door that I just opened led into the latrines. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's a little, bunch of little poops actually putting on a show uh, with uh, top hats and cane. Um, I watched up. All right, so uh, I guess welcome to uh, today's uh, game of D and D. It's a one shot. Yeah. And um, I don't know if any of you guys want to explain what the character concepts are for this game. Does anyone else remember? Otherwise, uh, I'll otherwise go I ahead and do it. Does okay. anybody remember the website? Yeah, I have it. Hold on one second. Oh, there's a website? I'm not it aware of it. It was a website. You know what? I'll Let me have it. it. <laughs> I'll post it in the description of this video. Wonderful. So the basic okay. gist was one day I found this thing where you get to imp uh, put like a little stat block of yourself. Like you answer a bunch of questionnaires and like, it's either like like a one to five kind of thing, and after like a series of like eighty questions, it generates your stats, and mm -hmm. that's how we got our stats here. Uh, since we're all regular humans, we decided to just get the regular plus one to all abilities. We're essentially playing ourselves as D and D characters, mm -hmm. and uh, we try to get our backgrounds, our classes, everything that we could possibly make it towards our real life counterparts. So like myself, uh, I picked the soldier background because well, I was in the military for a few years. So it just makes sense. Uh, and the rest of you guys, what did you end up picking? Yeah, let's start with uh, Alt Peter. I actually picked um, an entertainer illusionist. Um, because I've always been fascinated with magic and Wiccanism, and I am also a, an accomplished performer. Uh -huh. And is your character's name actually Peter? My my character's name is actually Peter, but the stage name my character goes by is Maven. Ah, Maven. Of course. Oh, also, one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, Benny came up with the parameters of our class and level, and we're going off of your age divided by four, and that's your class level. So, uh, Peter here, he's, what, 32, 33? I'm 34. 34, a much older. Uh -huh. So he came up with level eight for that. I'm 30, so I got to pick level seven. And poor John, which is the next character, he's I'm 20. the youngest. <laughs> he's 20, yes. so he gets <laughs> he to be screwed. level five. And as Christoph, just to make sure... Uh, he's making you know he came up with the level scheme. And... Oh, is Christoph? My bad. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> credit where credit is due. And so Christoph is also, uh, I believe, uh, in his 20s. I know that ended up with him being level 7. Who, who knows? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who knows what the character sheet says? I, I don't. I, I see I, 7 I my age. I have to sometimes count from the year I was born. And sometimes I forget that. I have to Google that stuff. I have to go into Google and type, you know, years since this date, and, you know, it goes right up at the top. When did the Berlin Wall fall? Oh, yeah, that's when I was born. <laughs> uh, do we give the name of the website for people in case they wanted to try this themselves? Yes. If you happen to have it, can you post it in chat? Uh, sure. That way I can just copy it later. All right, so yeah, so most of the uh, levels, basically all of the levels are based on age and sort of uh, that sort of screws John uh, because most of the other <laughs> wow, characters. Wow. But at least he's level five. That's where you at least yeah. uh, learn a lot of cool stuff, um, become a little more, uh, uh, little yeah, more impactful it's, in a fight. It's perfect for me because I, I'm a rogue bard because mm -hmm. I used to get into some less than legal activities. And 
I'm also a musician. So the two worked well together. And at level five, you have your college for bard, and then you have your um, your special your specialty right. for rogue. Right. Which is very good. The uh, one thing that uh, uh, I want to point out uh, is I do believe some skullduggery was involved in the generation of these stats. If you do follow the link uh, that was <laughs> that was used, um, certain characters uh, f uh, sort of flout the laws of basic human decency uh, and were able to generate stats statistics for themselves that were uh, ridiculous, in my opinion. But why are you saying that, Benny? <laughs> oh, it's funny that. You should come out with that question first. Oh, it's uh, very interesting. Uh, <laughs> some people, some people just happen to have a very high opinion of their own skill sets, um, and so that may or may not skew the uh, results at the end of the survey. Benny, uh, why don't you tell us why you're the DM? <laughs> I, uh, I am the DM because I like to provide services for the rest of you guys as players. Um, pay no attention to the screenshot uh, that has just been posted. So this is the the, no, the original no, no, scores no. that we had rolled. At the yes. bottom, I put the point by to show our like level disparity. Uh, yes. Poor Benny <laughs> rolled a twenty spread. The reason Peter got uh, regular Peter got so high is because that eighteen in charisma just like it's worth like nineteen points. So yes. it just like boosted him way up. The rest of us are semi-average. Yeah, th these were, uh, what was the calculation there? Like, if it was point by, if this is even before you get to like, I forgot what it was. It was like, <laughs> just some ridiculous number. So, you know, yeah, this is before we applied like our level up stats. So, and before right. we applied the plus ones, I believe. Race, yeah, race stats or anything. Um, so, uh, all right. So the, the concept here that I wanted to have at least is, since we are, uh, or rather, I should say you guys are higher level, um, my assumption here is that you all know each other uh, to some extent and maybe have adventured previously with each other, right? So that was one of the questions I did ask, um, and we may have to recap some of that just so um, we get to where we are now, um, but that's the idea. You know, you guys do know each other. I know that Peter and uh, who is not here, actually, um, but I know Peter and John had a whole story about knowing each other. Um, and... Well, we're siblings in real life, so our right. characters were also going to be siblings. Mm -hmm. Right, and one of you was in um, more in a druid grove, I believe. I believe Peter's character was. Yep. Um, yeah, Peter's character is like a druid bard. He had joined right. the Emerald Enclave. Right. Yep. Right, and we did. I, I remember. However, mm -hmm. I'm I'm not so noble. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'll tell you what so what we'll do is um and this is part of uh you guys are definitely gonna have to help me out because i didn't have a lot of prep for even the hook uh for this campaign but um so you guys all find yourself um in front of a um in the city um there is in sort of the noble district of uh water deep um uh in front of a door to a manor um and you're all you've all received um a missive for uh for gainful employ um and all of you have different reasons i know you mentioned uh earlier about why some of you may actually be actually on your way out of Waterdeep, um but some of you may find that fairly difficult depending on uh, who you have to avoid just to leave the city um so maybe this would be a good chance to sort of introduce your characters. Um, and how did you get here? How did you end up in front of this? Ready to go. Just a question, Benny. I, where have I heard Waterdeep before? Is that like one of the pre-made campaigns? It's Forgotten Realms. It's ah. Forgotten Realms. It's a, it's a sort of famous, it's one of the it's more very well known cities, yeah, of, uh, of Waterdeep along the sword coast of uh, Faroon. Um, and it is a very large city, a um, lot of opportunities. Uh, you've got your, you've got your ghettos, you've got your nice areas, uh, you've got your, you know, 
your taverns out the wazoo, some more famous than others. Um, and it is along the coast. There is a lot of history there that we could spend hours talking about. Um, but how did you find yourself there? Now that you asked the question, young man. Okay, so uh, from my background, I uh, I picked that I was a, a mercenary, and I go from place to place doing odd jobs. And if I'm in Waterdeep, I probably just so happen to finish a job and looking to get to the next one. You're just trying to keep it moving. Yeah, I gotta get that money. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Is your so your character's name is it Raphael? I'm yep. not entirely yeah. sure what the concept was. Okay. I so just Raphael picked myself like... because I am myself and I am a Eldritch Knight, which oh, okay. so uh, since I used guns a lot when I was in the military, I ended up picking not a melee weapon for this, but I took the crossbow <laughs> and just kind of reflavored that to be. Oh, this is how I kill people. Hold on. Good question. Yeah? Is this a stone crossbow? <laughs> oh my fucking god. Uh, <laughs> we should definitely not get into why stone crossbows are even a thing. Or usable, for that matter. But Because they're not. <laughs> we'll move on to Alt Peter. Um, why are you here? Why are any of us here? Um, well... The philosopher says. Uh, so, I would imagine. <clears throat> well, well, my character's whole thing is that I've been kind of uh, trying to pursue. I've been trying to kind of pursue my own freelance career in magic since I kind of lost my main in to magical society in uh, Waterdeep by getting ousted from Blackstaff Tower by insulting its um headmaster um yes so you know because i had to just guy write that kelvin kelvin blackstaff is a asshole across the sky um that so, can't go over well at, yeah, yeah no yeah um so i actually so i'm here because i heard that there might be an interesting bit of magic that this mansion might hold All right okay so um next up is john well uh i was born and raised in Waterdeep, and at the ripe age of say 16 my character will be 16 since i was still in new york city in my real life around then um, the real life? This is the New York City of the Sword Coast. Exactly. That's yeah. why. I, I I figured. Well, actually, no. I moved when I was a, when I was turning sixteen. So my character is actually going to be fourteen. Um, this isn't exactly me. This my brother and I decided that these characters would have been us if we continued to live in New York City. Um, I, in real life, wasn't headed down the exact right path, so I will delve more into the Skullduggery than I actually did in real life. Yeah. Well, that's why this is D&D. &D. This is fantasy. Exactly. We're living uh, that life right now. Yeah. So, I chose the Inheritor background because at a young age, my father had died, <laughs> and uh, although he didn't have much to give me, the state felt bad because he was a, dis a disabled veteran, so they gave me some money. Not a lot, but enough to survive. So uh, I'm going to have the city of Waterdeep give me a very, very small amount of money in which I'm going to be upset at. And we'll start with me just stealing the ivory goats of wondrous power. Ivory figurines. I, I also understand, um, before we get into the ivory figurines, that you did receive an inheritance of some of your father's estate on top of its uh, top, a very small uh, piece of your father's estate. Yep, I have my father's trusty machete. Uh, okay. Um, the one he used in the Great War of fill in the blank, Benny. 
Ah, uh, yes, the Great War fill in the blanks. Uh, that was back in <laughs> DR and DR 1487. I do remember. Um, these were these were terrible. It took a terrible toll on the entire Sword Coast, uh, let alone Waterdeep. Uh, but yes, Great War fill in the blanks of uh, DR 1487. Yeah, jot that down. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> great. So let's move on uh, to Kristoff's character. I hear tell you are a warlock. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> I was living in the woods. Then, apparently, I don't know, just discovered, or need to discover if this is the real life. And here I am. Yes, I do. Talk much. Right, yeah. I, I, I know there are many secrets. Uh, yeah. I am privy to some of them as the DM, but I do understand there are, your character is fraught with secrets. <laughs> And and the and the desire to to discover secrets, yeah, to find out where these secrets lead. Um. All right. Me so, <laughs> uh, just so you know, there's only the four of you, right? And one of those is the high level one. So these uh, whatever encounters we do have, <laughs> you guys are gonna be fucked because I'm gonna have to sort of uh, reduce some of them, and I didn't have time to do that on the fly. Um. So all right. So it is a one shot. We could. It is a one shot. Yeah. The TPK. Yeah, exactly. It like, and it wouldn't really hurt too much, even though these are technically you. So I don't know how attached you are to yourselves, uh, in the sense. Kill me. Yeah, definitely. Just die. <laughs> don't die. Kill me now. Um. All right. So you guys, I'm gonna just uh definitely hand wave and say you guys do know each other just from being in the city. Um. Uh, maybe you guys went to school with each other. I remember hearing something about that. You know, maybe you've done some, you know, jobs here on the side. It looks like Ralph is doing the jobs more often than not. He's taking a lot of freelance work. Um, so yeah. you guys all find yourself in front of the uh, in front of this manor here, um, and it's 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 definitely well appointed. This is a two-story sort of manor, right in the uh, sort of uh, noble district of Waterdeep. Um, rich history, a lot of beautiful architecture, and this is just one of those uh, buildings. There's very nondescript comparatively nothing really stands out um you've got the typical gargoyles and uh and other architecture um for this sort of district um and the door is made of beautiful oak uh very uh, very well with with intricate designs which is uh, par for the course uh for this area um and you who's gonna knock on the door you all basically did get Let's just say it was like a town board. You went into town, or you clicked on the guy with the exclamation point on his head, and uh, he directed you to the uh, to this place uh, as a place that uh, that has some work um, and or rewards uh, for that work. Um, some of you may have noticed uh, sort of like a uh, Craigslist, whatever the water dating equivalent of Craigslist was. Uh, you may have uh, been searching um, and found this work there. Um, and so, yeah, who's going to you – know, I guess you all meet up, um, however however you meet up, handing, shaking hands or anything like this. Um, and who's going to knock on the door? So is this what Craigslist has to offer these days? <laughs> Craigslist, perfect. Writing that down. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, so uh, we're gonna do this, right? We're gonna we're gonna start this quest, and then we're gonna you know get out of here, right? If I recall correctly, in typical RPG fashion, the youngest person is usually the main character. So, John, <laughs> go ahead and knock on that door. In, in in war movies, they are sometimes the first to die. That too. <laughs> this is true. Yes. Axel Ridge. <laughs> Axel Ridge, yeah, who knows? It could be. You're going to have to be stuffing some holes with, like, tampons or something just to get this guy to, you know, not bleed out. Hey, that shit works. Floor. Yeah, Actually, be careful. While, while I cast, is, I cast is, Minor uh, Illusion to put a baby bonnet on John's head. Oh, man. While this is being discussed, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cast Augury. <laughs> okay. To see... What will come of this meeting that we're about okay. to go to? <laughs> we'll okay. be back in one minute, guys. 
<laughs> yeah, because I'm gonna have to read Augury. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you, do you have that in front of you? Do you want to? Uh, do you want yeah. to? Uh, yeah. Read that. Read the description and, and what cast, you're gonna take. By casting gem and late sticks, rolling dragon bones, laying or ornate cards, or employing some other dividing tool, you receive an omen from an otherworldly entity about the results of a specific course of action that you plan to take within the next 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. A GM chooses from the following possible omens. Wheel for good results. Woe for bad results. Wheel and woe for both good and bad results. Nothing for results that aren't especially good or bad. The spell doesn't cut, take into account any possible circumstances that might change the outcome, such as casting additional spells, the loss or gain of companion, such and such and such. Uh, if you cast the spell two or more times before completing your next long rest, there's a cumulative 25% chance for each casting after the first that you get a random reading. The GM makes the roll in secret. Very interesting. So basically, in this, obviously this is the first time you're casting it probably for the day, we hope. Yep. Um, and so, it's, I have to tell you whether there's going to be good results, bad results. It, there, I don't have to give like details, right? Like I don't have to say like, oh, you're gonna have a spear through your heart uh, in about thirty minutes. Yeah, you don't have like to get the specifics. Just okay. pertaining to what I'm asking about, and my question is, okay, wh what will happen after we go into that room and talk about whatever reason we're here for? Okay, so uh, you cast the spell, you ask the question. You enter into yourself, for the most part, as the magic uh, works. It's weave. It's uh, magic. Uh, weave of magic, so to speak. Um, so uh, you you're getting a lot of sort of you could say noise, right? Normally, when you cast this spell, it's fairly clear. It's fairly straightforward. Um, you know, it'll tell you, okay, this is great. This is bad. Uh, but you do get an answer, but there's a lot of noise. You seem, it seems Spell had to work a little harder. You had to sort of dig a little deeper um, to get um, your answer. Um, and your question was, what will happen due to you coming into this place, right? Or what, like whether you're knocking on the door, whatever. Yeah. That's all the question was? Okay. Now, what, um, what's going to happen after we talk to whoever it is we're talking to about the reason that we're here. So okay. for this, whatever quest is. All right. So for the most part, after sort of the the haze, the the sort of hazy retort comes back from the brief, um, you do get a positive, generally positive uh, result. Um, there is, uh, from what you can tell after you sort of sussed out uh, your feelings on what came back, um, there was not too much, uh, there wasn't really any negative um, that you can see. It was just a little strange that it took sort of so long to to get that sorted out. Um, but yeah, otherwise, the, I guess you could say wheel. So, in yeah. that case, as, as the smoke clears from the little incense that I decided to burn, I kind of wave it away. I look at all you. One of you is going to die. Come on, Chris. Why do you gotta say it like that? And then I knock on the door. <laughs> All right. So as you knock on the door, um, you give it a good couple of knocks, uh, and it, you can tell this is a real sturdy door. But um, the sound of it is almost uh, sonorous. Just, uh, just you can tell this is really well built. Um, so when you knock on the door, um, after a few moments, um, the door opens. And uh, you are greeted by a uh, tall character, so, you know, sort of what you assume is the butler. Um, very strange-looking fellow. Um, not it, it's human, um, from what you can tell, what you're familiar with races. Um, but very pallid, skin's real, uh, really just dry, like drained of any blood that you know normally uh, would accompany a human being with maybe pink skin or darker skin even, um, but very pallid skin, um, very droll looking face. There are bags under his eyes, um, you know, flat sort of bowl cut um, at the top. And he's, and, but otherwise he's dressed um, in the standard uh, accoutrement of, uh, if we want to get fancy, 
Um, what does that of, mean? That just means he's dressed in the same way other, uh, other, uh, you know, butlers would be in general. He's got the, the tails, sort of the penguin tails, uh, you know, and the tight sort of, uh, I guess you could say it's a cummerbund or something that they wear. Uh, and he bows. He doesn't say anything. Um, and if any of you want to give me a perception check, um, we'll see what else you might find. Sure. And while we're doing that, I look him up and down. Then I look back at everyone else, cover my uh, mouth with my right hand as I talk to them. Mm. Maybe mm. it's going to be him. <laughs> so, oh, what is what is so the bad. effect of what is the effect there? So you, are you trying to uh, throw your voice? No, just like like quietly, so mm. you can't really hear. But I'm not trying that hard. <laughs> All right. So I'm already seeing wonderful rolls. These Here are go. Oh my god! Rolls. These are and great. I am overjoyed at the the level of detail that you are all able to suss out. Um, so we got we got eleven, we've got a nine, and we've got another eleven. Um, I think uh, I I don't know if John wants to roll. Uh, if not, it's fine. Yeah, I'm trying to roll. My phone's just being stupid. <laughs> oh, let's hope. Let's all cross our fingers. Oh, look at that. There we go. Look at that. You You got a 19. All right. So um, all of you, for the most part, uh, aside from John, let's say, um, or at least all of you really do notice, you know, this is, uh, it seems almost, you get the feeling like um, there's something wrong aside from just looking like a very dreary individual. Um, But John, you notice that uh, normally uh, where, you know, where one might have um, been greeted by the butler uh, in a place like this, uh, he said nothing, and you get the feeling that he is maybe not even able to talk. Um, he should have, at least in the standard, um, in the standard way of uh, nobility or place or people that live in places like this. Uh, normally, you would have already been greeted with the, you know an enter or whatever. All he has done so far is sort of bow and gesture in as if to say you're already welcome. And so that's pretty much all he has done, right? So for all of you, um, he's sort of indicating with his uh, with the arm that isn't holding the door open um, to enter into the foyer. All right, I, uh, I noticed this and I don't particularly know the people that I am adventuring with. So, uh, I keep that little tidbit to myself. You're keeping secrets. I like this. You're sowing discord. On discord. <gasps> oh, no? Okay. That's, that's yeah. like two levels <laughs> deep. <laughs> all right, so, um, so are, are all of you going to enter? Is it going to be one, you know, one by one? I'll or... go in, yeah. Okay, all right. So, so we'll try it. I can definitely go in because I do not want to be outside for very long. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, so it's a sunny day, just so you guys know. Nothing too crazy going on outside. It's your typical uh, Water Davian day. Um, and, you know, if you want to get into the lore of whatever, um, I believe, if I remember correctly, Shield Meat was, uh, which is a standard uh, holiday um, in the in Faerun, um, especially on the Sword Coast. Uh, you know, has passed uh, recently. Um, I would say within the last 10 day. Oh, now we're getting real nerdy. Uh, so, <laughs> um, as you enter the foyer, um, it's it's fairly well lit. It's nothing uh, a little too crazy. Um, and uh, it's sort of one of those the floors are made of really beautiful marble. Um, you've got your sort of spiral stairs to the left and right um, going up onto the second floor um and the windows are uh you know they're not stained glass so much as the pattern is very much like stained glass if you know what i mean i'm not too familiar with words um uh, but it's you know it's sort of uh it's it's basically glass with the ribbing in there you know the circles and the uh, and the radiating uh patterns is it like holy um, looking a little bit, not super holy, but it's sort of like a really nice looking uh, sort of window that allows a lot of light into the foyer in that way. So it is well lit. 
Um, and, but it's not sort of, you don't, you barely even, at this time of day, you don't need any torches lit. No sconces or anything have been, uh, uh, you know, lit for the day. It's, and it's in the middle of the day. Um, so you enter, and the floors are made of marble, beautiful gray and black marble. Um, and there are stairs that, I could say it's a short set of stairs, if you know what I mean, when you enter into the lobby of any place, and then it raises up a few steps to the sort of standard level of the rest of that floor. Um, that's what you're looking at in front of you. And normally the archway that that is there, um, that would normally be uncovered, is actually got a curtain. There is a uh, velvet burgundy curtain um, going across, um, about 10 feet across, just for size. Uh, but the whole sort of uh, foyer itself is about 60 feet um, from left to right, from stair to stair on either end. Um, and so the stairs just sort of go up in a, in a long arc uh, up the sides, not like a coil so much as just a 90 degree radius. I want to get into how to go up. Um, and so uh, as you all enter, um, the butler, I don't know if you guys want to nickname this guy or not, um, enters uh, and sort of begins to lead the way. Very, very slow pace. Um, this is someone that you get the feeling um, hates life and hates everything about life um, and hates the fact that he's a part of the world. Um, that's sort of the emotion you're getting from his, just his very emotions. Um, uh, it just at uh, the slow way in which he does everything as if it's a, it's a labor just to do that. Um, and so as he, he's still sort of semi gesturing, gesturing towards the, uh, towards the archway, um, where the, uh, where the velvety curtain is, you get the feeling, um, that there is a lot more behind that. It's not just another door, um, that's sort of like the curtains there just to sort of obscure. Uh, what's beyond, beyond it and sort of it start it flows a little it's being heavy it's not just flowing like crazy um it's you know but it's moving enough to indicate that maybe there's just some empty air but behind that so the room itself opens up probably um so he walks you up the the few steps that lead up to the uh, main floor and um and then he sorts of begins to uh, begins to open the curtain um, and as you are uh, sort of acclimating to the light inside, um, he is sort of just pushes it off to the side. And what you see in front of you is a, uh, I guess the important thing is that there is a humanoid sitting at a table. Um, and so to sort of set the tableau here, for you, um, there is someone sitting there at a table writing a lot of uh just writing sort of not frantically but very busily um and that's not the most important detail uh really what you all notice without any sort of perception check is that um this man has the head you assume it's a man but has the head of a bull uh probably one of the largest bulls you've ever seen in your life um and um uh, for all intents and purposes, we're looking at a Minotaur. Um, so if anybody would like to roll another perception check, let's see how this uh, this shit show goes. Uh, while we are being walked through the house, my character is just shuddering with anticipation, thinking about all the things he can take. Ah. This would be that kind of place. A Minotaur. Would I be able to, um, would there be anything in this walk towards this hallway that I would be able to, like, kind of latch onto and roll a history check on? Just um, to see if I know any history about the house? You could say, um, the, sort of the architecture in the foyer. Um, just all of that. There's sort of, it really is beautiful glass. Um, and you could say 
Um, if you like, you can roll a history check, and let's see where that gets. But um, I wouldn't roll it just yet. Let's just uh, okay. let's do this quick because we just did this uh, these rolls here. Um, okay. So Fifteen got a nine. We've got a twenty modified, and we've got a seventeen. All right. So, and these are all just uh, for perception, right? You guys are looking around into this room. So, aside from all of the, it just looks like there's a lot of work here. Um, you, uh, you all pretty much at least notice um, that the man is very well dressed. Uh, this is not, you know, standard fare for any sort of minotaur. Um, and this is all happening in a split second, so you guys haven't all fully <laughs> in. But um, the uh, the other thing you notice is that this doesn't seem natural. Any stories you may have heard about uh, minotaurs and uh, and all these different uh, uh, scenarios. He's wearing a robe, okay? Um, but I like this. Um, it 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 seems it seems like something's sort of wrong. The way he's lolling his head a little bit as he's looking down and writing, you know, uh, on his uh, on his scrolls, um, it sort of looks almost like he's uncomfortable um, with. Like he hasn't been uh, used to this. Maybe this may not be his head. Let's say it may, there may even be a um, a sort of mask. You may be wearing some sort of like giant, uh, you know, Halloween mask, so to speak. Um, but uh, old Peter, uh, you do notice. Uh, you look. This is no mask. This the way that the way it seems to connect to his neck. Um, it goes from strong, bull, muscular, uh, you know, sinews into just what is what you assume is a normal human body humanoid you can't really tell uh whether this might be an elf or uh or even a half orc for all you can see um so this is like some sort of botched transmutation that that may be your first uh impression here um this sort of it stands out as yeah first of all this is not normal and second of all this is not just somebody wearing you know uh, just a big old you know mask um, and so, and if you want, you can roll a history check, and we'll just assume that you're gathering in all of the architecture of this place as you want. Mm -hmm. And just to describe his, uh, he's wearing some really like emerald robes with like golden, um, with golden touches. Jesus Christ! Um, so that's a history check. Good. Um, so, um, as you're taking in everything there with this, uh, with this place. Uh, you notice that, uh, that this is a place that, in your knowledge of the city, you haven't spent a whole lot of time, I'm assuming, in the Noble District, right? You're, this character doesn't just hang out with all of the, uh, the hoity-toities, right? Who, me? In general? Yeah, like, you don't spend a lot of time as, you know, just... Uh, my, mother, my mother is a noble. Okay. So, like, I kind of, like, know of their ways, and I know of them. But okay, I, so you've I been, kind of reject them. You've been to this area before, then, right? Okay. The, the chances are you've at least been here, whether by choice or by you know, feeling uh, sort of forced to having to uh, do something, uh, you know, regarding uh, mother, right? Um, so, mm -hmm. um, from what you gather, as beautiful as this place is, and you know, it's not overly beautiful. Um, it's it's it seems almost like. Um, you don't remember uh, ever really seeing this building, this manor, um, in this area of the Noble District. Um, it's possible uh, that this may be a new construction. Uh, you haven't really heard a lot of sort of new constructions happening in this district for uh, some time. Um, there's a lot of old money in the Noble District. Uh, so for this to be a new, new construction would be a little weird. Um, but mm -hmm. it almost seems like this is this was built brand new and in the middle of everything else, right? Like so, this is not uh, this is not something nobody would notice if there was a uh, construction set up. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what you gather in your history. Check. Okay, so I will step forward one step and say uh, to the bullman, you um, you have a gorgeous house. How did you and acquire he, it? He's he's startled in a, in a way, 
um, sort of, you know, the fact that there's no door. He wasn't announced, or you weren't announced. Um, he sort of was so busy, uh, head down on his, in his, what you assume is work, um, that, uh, he sort of started, he goes, oh, oh, you guys, oh, you guys finally showed up. All right, good. Sorry. Uh, I know first impressions looks a little weird. I know what you guys are probably thinking and I can guarantee you it's not unless it is, but I can't read your guys' minds. So, uh, here, I'll start off real quick. You guys are at least maybe the fourth or fifth uh, group that I have seen today. Um, it has been wild. Um, so let's just get the sort of elephant, you know, in the room uh, sorted out. This is not normally my head. Uh, I sort of, I mean, I don't know if I have to go into all the details here. Things. Things have gotten a little wild. Let's just say I have a competitor or a friend, a frenemy. We've got all sorts of different names for people like this. I'm sure you guys get it, um, but let's get down to the bottom of this. Uh, now that that's out of the way, um, you know, and so he will then, you know, so he just he sort of starts to ramble, obviously. Um, and uh He'll sort of, in a way, he has rambled to the point where he forgot you asked the question. Um, so uh -huh. he's like, he, he, he has this sort of frenetic sort of, I've got, you know, a lot of stuff to take care of. Um, and he'll mention to you guys, you know, all right, you guys, yeah, so you guys are real important to my plans today. Hopefully you guys can get this job done for me. Um, and then we can all just sort of, Go, just go home and be happy and just relax for the day. Uh, you guys have, you know, you guys have some good stuff coming your way if we can get this done. Um, hey, Mr. Yeah. Minotaur face, dude. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can call me C, like the letter C. All right, so w what is the job and will it get us out of Waterdeep today? Oh, it, oh. Oh, it'll definitely get you out of water deep, and definitely earlier than maybe even today. Or is that so, even possible? I'm not sure. Okay, but sure, yeah. I like that attitude. Um, let's, yeah. What's the payment? All right. So, um, he goes. I don't know if we got to go all super detail into the payment here, but rest assured, uh, you guys can see the place. I'm good for the money. Um, but uh, we can work out the details. Let's just say, uh we can do a little proof of concept and make sure you guys are up to snuff um, before we discuss any real pay. I want to know that the, uh, that the payment is commensurate to the level of expertise um, that you guys are sort of, uh, uh, sort of going to put on display for me, hopefully. Um, and uh, you've met my, uh, my humble attendant, Jeeves. And uh, and so he points to Jeeves. Jeeves grunts, and <clears throat> that's pretty much all he does. He nods his head. Uh, he's holding a towel, like as if he was a waiter, but he's not a waiter. It's just sort of like something I guess he might be used to, uh, sort of towel over his arm. Um, so uh, what he'll explain is, um, okay, good. So uh, what I'd like to explain is that I just need and I, I, this, I know this thing, this whole head thing is nuts. It's killing me. It just, I can barely move around. I can barely, like, you know, uh, even keep this thing up. I feel like a baby when they're newborn. It just, your head's lolling all over the place. Um, and I'm having, a, like, I'm drawing, like, labyrinths now. It's a little weird, like mazes and stuff. It's, it's driving me insane. Um, I think it's affecting me up in the head here. So, um, so here's what I'll explain. I know how to undo this. I just can't get the parts that'll let me undo this, uh, this heinous thing that has been done to me. Um, and so your first task is going to be to get at least one of those parts. If you can get me one of those parts, I've actually already got about five of them and I need uh, seven total. Uh, so this is going to be, this is going to be a snap for you guys. I'm sure of it. Um, and um, he sort of glosses over the rest of it. Um, sort of trails off and he says, um, so the first thing I'm going to need you to get, um, you're going to see where you're going to go. I'm going to send you somewhere. Uh, where you're going to go, 
uh, is that you're going to see, you'll know it when you see it. It's going to be a vial, right? It's sort of like this uh, vial, and it's got some dust in there, right? Um, and you'll you'll know it when you see it. Um, and it's about the size of a hand, uh, right? So he'll he'll sort of hold his hand out. It's a regular from there where you can see when he does hold his hand out. It's a fairly normal hand. You assume at least human, if not half elf or elven. Um, and he is of the of the Caucasian persuasion color. Um, if we want to get into details that way, um, so uh, that's pretty much what he says. And he says, uh, "I don't know if you guys are ready to go right now, or if you want." Um, you know, you can just maybe, you know, hang out here for a few. If you got to gather your things, anybody need to pick anything else up before you go? Like, you know, once, once you're on the way, it's not going to be a chance to go to the bathroom or anything like that. You know, Any we can just pee outside, right? <laughs> you're you're going to pee on here, man. You'll get, you'll get arrested. You guys nuts? But we're leaving. Sure. But... This is my place. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be in here. This is this is gonna get real ugly if we get to talking about pee. I'm not a big fan of pee. Um, so, so, just a quick question, just out of courtesy, like, are you guys good to go? Because I can then I can show you the way, um, and we can at least get this day over with. Are you coming? You're not coming with us, are you? Oh, oh, hell no. Um, I, there's no way I'll be able to go into this at all. Um, and so he leaves it at that. Uh, and yeah, there you go. So is everybody ready? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Oh, um, like I guess I'll just take a, I guess I'll just take a moment to summon my familiar before we go. Oh, um, if we go, on, if, right. then I can do the same. Mm. While you two are doing that, can I make a perception check to see if I, is is there anything in this room besides this man? Um, so, um, so you've got the man at the table in the middle of the table. That already strikes you as a little weird for a noble to be having. It's almost like he's got some sort of war room set up with a party of one, right? Like so, um, you know, it looks like he's had a lot of stuff going on. There's there's a bunch of papers lying around with a lot of just unintelligible scribbles um, all over the place. Uh, you there's can intelligible that scribbles anyway. where. No, no. There's you can't tell whether it's his handwriting that's garbage or whether it's um, it's written in some sort of strange language. If any of you have like, uh, was it Eyes of the Rune Master? Yeah, right here. All right. I so, have comprehend yeah. languages. Okay. I can speak um, Spanish. <laughs> does, does comprehend languages work for uh, for written text? Uh, yes. It takes about one minute to read one page of text. Okay, all right. So in this case, not, this spell does not decode secret messages in a text or a glyph, such as an arcane sigil, that okay. isn't part of a written language. All right. So I'll say um, just because the papers are strewn about and you can clearly, you know, you don't need eagle eyes to see them. Uh, I would say that you, uh, old Peter, do not recognize that there's any language to this. So if this is just chicken scratch, it's very real possibility. Um, but, uh, and so Christoph, on the other hand, um, sees that uh, there is, it's no language. It is, there seems to be a language here. And no, you know how to read any language, any known language in, uh, in all of the, in all of Faerun, right? Anything that normally you've been shown stuff uh, that, you know, has boggled the mind of uh, even scholars and you were able to decipher uh, this stuff. This is just innate. This is just part of your magic. Um, what you're seeing here is that you can decipher there is a language here, but it is no known language uh, that is is known to anywhere in favor. Um, there, it, and this goes beyond even your magic. This is there is some intelligence here. Uh, it is not chicken scratch. Um, and maybe the intention was to sort of code this into some sort of chicken scratch there. Um, but you definitely know something's, something's up here. Uh, it's a little weird. Uh, but, uh, that's pretty much what, what you gather, uh, with your eyes. But nobody else, to everybody else, it's pretty much just like, what the hell is this crap? Is this guy like, it just 
doing, you know, random words or symbols for that matter, because you can barely even make out letters at this, this point. This must be just fantasy. <laughs> cut, cut in the landslide. Um, so, uh, okay. So you all summon your familiars, right? What familiars do you guys have? If we're playing ourselves, my familiar should be a cat or a ferret. Okay. So, well, I'm, hey, I mean, this is D and D. We can we can go wherever you want with this. It can be a cat. It can be a ferret. Or it a can be a cat-like ferret. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll go with a. I guess I'll go with the cat. Fennec fox. Okay. Oh, I've Fennec fox. Picked an owl. An owl. An owl. A He's flying... gonna be. The, you ever watched American Sniper? You know how you got that one buddy that watches for you? This owl is going to okay. be that one guy telling me how to, like, yo, you need to, he's like, the, move your fucking scope this way. He's the scout. He's the, he's yep. the uh, yeah, the, the, scope, uh, the scope guy. Okay, yeah. Aren't you a fighter? I am a fighter. He's a fighter with magic. Eldritch Knight. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, so we've got... We've got some natural familiars. I'm happy there are no imps or or crazy stuff. We've got some actual familiars. Some, I, I got cat, a book. The traditional cat. I'm loving it. <laughs> uh, do you have a familiar, Christoph? Yeah, it's my book. Ah, of course it is. I mean, how how could it not be? Um, all right, so we <laughs> we lost uh, we lost uh, old Peter. Uh, he, so he didn't like that I had a book as a familiar. <laughs> yeah, he's like, books? Fuck that shit. I don't play that brand of D&D, &D, not in my house. All right, so... <laughs> Is there anything of even, like, the remote... Oh, right, remote you had asked of, me a question, of... and yes. I, I went around circles on that. So, when you do look around... Um, there is this man. There are these sheets, obviously. Um, there is. There's no other person in here, um, and it's it's basically a den, a very sort of large den, um, in the tradition of sort of like a hunter's lodge, uh, you know, with a big fireplace, and there's just like there, you know, there are animal heads on the wall, so a lot of elk, deer, um, your traditional hunting uh, animals. Nothing really stands out. There's no, like, dragon's head or anything like that. Um, but if you want, you can roll me an investigation check, see if there's any more detail uh, to this. Okay. That is not my best skill. Boy. Looks like you're fucked. <laughs> But, yeah, for at least from a sort of perception, uh, what gather, really nothing. Also, w while you're doing that, I just want to point out that Ralph has a 15 intelligence, but he spelled <laughs> soldier wrong. <laughs> hey, man, shit happens. Solder? S solider. Soldier. <laughs> Solid G. with a D? With a G? No, S-O-L-I-D. Oh, shit. Yo, man, I was in a rush. This was like months ago. He was uh -huh. doing his Metal Gear, like Solidus or something like that. Um, Except this has been go. You, you've had that sheet up for how long now? 15 minutes? It's like you 50. can even scroll through it. <laughs> Just could have told me that a long time ago. Yeah, but now, you know, if, if the public can know. Oh, what am yeah. I talking about? I... Did not roll the right modifier. Okay, so it's uh, seven. Seven. All right, cool. So that's a ten. All right, that's fine. Um, yeah. So, you know, just from your sharp – because you're, you're a sharp-eyed guy, right? Um, you know. Um, you – Wait, wait, wait. Case... Did you say – is that a 12? No, 10, right? Seven no, plus um, three? Yes. No, no, no. The modifier wasn't seven. I oh. added the modifier. It was – it's a plus four. So since ah. I did a plus two, it would it would only be okay. four plus three, so seven. So That's I fine. I probably missed. Okay. So yeah, your your eyes fall out of your head, and you now take ten points of damage. Um, no, so <laughs> you're you're sort of casing the joint. You've been doing that since you got in, right? So this is yes. not uh, you, this is sort of what you do. 
Um, and um, as you're just uh, sort of to meta game a little bit, uh, your character's a rogue, right? And bard? Yeah. All right. And so uh, did, did you choose an archetype for your rogue? Yes, I'm an arcane trickster. Arcane tricks are cool. All right, so um, what you see is, you know, aside from your standard, uh, you know, just the, the heads on the shelf, you see some, you know, little tables, side tables and stuff with flowers and things like that. Um, it looks pretty boring in the room for what it's worth. Um, it's the, uh, there's nothing there, nothing gold or anything shiny, no little baubles um, that aren't attached uh, to this man, um, this minotaur man. Um, you know, for the most part, everything that's here is just sort of like, uh, you know, a stuffy old hunter's room, so to speak. Or at least it's, it seems to be made to look like a hunter's room, at least. Um, you don't see any guns, or I should say arrows, right? No bows, uh, nothing that uh, sort of like the hunter's weaponry uh, that you'd be used to seeing sort of displayed proudly as, oh, this is the weapon that took down the great... Um, a great uh, rhinoceros or anything like that. You don't really see anything like that around. Uh, so, uh, all right. So we've all we've all uh, prepared our spells and familiars and whatever else we got to do. Um, I believe now, according to Raphael, is a good time to cut. Yes. So give me one sec.